Welcome to Thinking on Your Feet Mathematics, week three. My name is Dirk Kirshner, occupational therapist. Just a few notes or a few things to think about before we get started on the actual activities. Um, I'm recording this after doing the activity with the kids. In other times, I've recorded it before. And I just realized it doesn't work so well to record it before because there's always changes. There's always things that I have to adapt. And I'm not quite sure how the kids are actually going to react to the activities. And then I have to change them. I kind of have my plan. And then it turns out to actually be very different. Um, we started with the uh, gunslinger activity. And uh, they did very well. Then we moved on to doing a few burpees. And because of uh, just the way things were arranged in the house through the circumstances, we recorded the final activity, the application, right after we did the sort of activation activity. And uh, it just didn't go well because the kids couldn't think. Their math brain was not turned on yet. And I just realized, wow, there's a, there's a real reason that I do this sequence, that you do this sort of activation to kind of wake them up. Then we go through the math. And once their brain is working on math activity, then we can you do the application after. But if I don't do it in the right order, I kind of shoot myself in the foot. It just doesn't work very well. And uh, so just some things to keep in mind when you're doing lessons with the kids it's good to kind of give them a chance to warm up and then uh, do some activities and then maybe try to broaden it out to where they can apply those things. Uh, but it's just to come from nowhere and all of a sudden just to have high expectations, it just doesn't work very well. Another thing I wanted to talk to about just the children's ability to learn and uh, just related to anxiety. Um, I talked to uh, one of the children in, in the hallway before we started and he said to me, oh, I'm really good at the gunslinger. I've been kind of working on it. And I just practiced. And uh, he said to me, I, uh, so when did you practice? I asked. And uh, he said, well, just now in the last 15 minutes, I kind of, you know, I finally really kind of got it. And uh, I said, did you practice during the week? And he said, no, I just didn't have, have time to practice during the week. And uh, that's so much, it reminded me of myself. I, uh, just the way I used to cram, I used to think that if I just do it right before, I can kind of convince the teacher. I used to take accordion lessons and I didn't like playing accordion very much or it was too anxious during the week. I couldn't just sit down and practice my parents didn't organize me or weren't really helping me to kind of organize my lesson. So like half an hour before I had to go to the lesson, I quickly try to kind of kind of learn everything so I didn't look totally stupid. But my teacher obviously knew that I was just cramming and I didn't really have it all together. And uh, and our brains learn and they adapt. But we need to have consistent practice every two days at least and then things just start to flourish. The brain picks these things up when the children are sleeping. It's a learning process. But if we just try to cram it in all at once, it, uh, it doesn't work. When I was in university, I was a big crammer. I, I, uh, I didn't like, I couldn't study. I was busy playing sports. I was busy doing things. And I just loved it when there was a 100% exam at the end of the year. Um, my professors sometimes allowed that because I was busy with sports and, uh, and I, could, I knew that if I had like a day or two before the exam, I could just cram like crazy because the anxiety was high, the pressure was high, and I could sit and for 12 hours, 14 hours, I had no problem studying. I just had my coffee and because I knew the pressure was on and I could do it. But if there was no pressure, I just couldn't do it. And uh, it looks like my grandchildren are taking after me. But it's really not the best thing. It's something to, if we can get the kids to regularly do things in a better spirit, a more connected way, 
and reduce that anxiety, then they could learn much better. And uh, I want to talk briefly about that whole idea. I have two sons, also have uh, five daughters, but I, most of my grandchildren right now are from my two sons. And I can see the difference, the difference between the way they relate to their children and how they have been relating in the past few weeks and the effects of how the children perform. It's quite interesting. And it's not always a straight thing. It kind of goes up and down. Some will be better, some will be not so good. But it really depends, I found, on how emotionally are con they connected in the family and how spiritually connected they are to the things that are going on around them. And so learning is more than a product of just the brain. It's a, it's a product of how the, the things that are going on around you are, you, are you able to learn? A few years ago, uh, many years ago now actually, when I, I graduated in 1990, I was working in Edmonton in various schools. And I went to one school, it was a culturally based school. And, and they were one of the top schools in Edmonton. They produced this school, most of the doctors and lawyers in, in, in our country in, in, uh, in Edmonton. And I asked, so what made your, makes your school better? And uh, one of the top educators said, well, Dirk, in our school, we give the children this many pencils, and in the public school, the children get this many pencils per year. And that's the difference. Okay, uh, kind of thought about that. So all we have to do is, instead of giving children this many pencils in public school, we just give them this many pencils. It wasn't really true, was it? Um, why could the children in one school handle so many? Because if I just give the children in the public school this many pencils, we're going to have a breakdown. It's not going to work. So there's definitely an, a, a deeper issue. I think about my children, my grandchildren. Um, I couldn't easily study. So I, as I think about over the years, I think, you know, children do well if they're connected, if they're calm, if they can kind of think about what's going on in their lives. And, and to be honest about that, my, my mother died when I was seven. And so that was a big shakeup in my life. I couldn't concentrate for, for a long time. There was things going on. My father was very busy. Uh, my dad, maybe he was you know, middle of the road. I don't know uh, compared to others. We always had supper together. We always talked. But as far as having time for me, um, there was selective times. Uh, it was like, yeah, hi, you there, yes, there. But I remember this when I was a little boy. Um, my dad bought me a model, and I thought, wow, this is really great. Uh, there was a model of an airplane, and it was a huge wingspan, and, you know, it was a real glider uh, made out of wood. And uh, I think one day we got together, and my dad opened it, and, and we started working on it, and I was really excited. Oh, we're going to do this glider, and, but it was very overwhelming for me. I was, I was maybe eight years old or something like that, seven years old. I don't quite remember. And I put that box, and I remember, I remember the picture of it in my mind. It said Dandy, uh, that was the name of the airplane, and I put it on my shelf, and I always just hoped, you know, we're going to build that thing. I'm really excited about building that model. And we never did. Year after year, day after day, it just sat there. I opened it one time, and I thought, well, maybe I can, and it was just, no, it was way too overwhelming. And my dad always had time for sports. He had time for his friends. But he didn't have so much time to do models with me or to connect with me. And so when I'm doing this program, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about, I got to connect with these kids. Uh, I don't know how, if you know the, the song Cats in the Cradle by Cat Stevens. 
and when I when I was in my teens, I'd heard I heard that song on the radio, and it just bring tears to my eyes because that was me and and my dad. Because as a dad, you just as a child, you just want your dad. And I know as a as a therapist, I have many many boys, and and when it comes down to these boys have difficulties, breakdowns, and in the end, I just want my dad. I want my mummy. That is just so important. So. That is uh, is a very difficult situation, especially you know if mom dies, um, dad is busy. What do you do? And uh, I think about the situation with my dad, and uh, I invest in my grandkids. My dad right now he doesn't talk to me. He hasn't talked to me in many years. So it's something to think about our own families and the difficulties there and how that affects us. So where does that come from? You might think, uh, well, Dirk, you're from pretty good stock. My grandfather, uh, he, uh, he didn't get along with his dad all that well. I don't know why. Um, but my, dad, my grandfather was religious, and somehow he wasn't connected very well to his son. And my grandfather joined the Nazis. He just loved... Uh, the Nazi youth, and uh, he moved away and uh, moved to a new town, Wolfsburg, West Germany, today, or Wolfsburg, Germany. And he raised two sons there, and uh, he just loved, uh, he just was really connected to the Nazis. Um, even in his later years, he would tell me that he would walk and meet an old colleague, and you know, they couldn't be open with, they'd do their little hiles, uh, uh, with their friends and it's just like wow he was connected to that but he wasn't connected to his sons um, I remember growing up and we'd have my dad and my uncle and and sitting at the table at Christmas dinner and there was always tension they were always at each other's throats and I'm um, as far as I remember for the last 30 years uh, before one of my uncles died before my uncle died uh, they didn't talk to each other, and that's kind of became a sort of a way that we function. That's the way we do things in our family. We don't talk to each other. We don't deal with the problems. On the other on the other side of the family, um, my grandfather was uh, in the Second World War. He was in the Panzer Division, and I think he got hurt and came home a little bit early from the war. And uh, they lived, uh, I don't know how much you know about Germany, but they lived near Bergen-Belsen, uh, just a few kilometers away. And uh, when the uh, concentration camp there was liberated, my grandfather tells the story of uh, how the Americans came in and there was a sign on the grave sites and it said, a hundred people in this grave and the British officers or Americans came by and just added two zeros and so made it something like 10,000. That's a tradition, that's a story that I was told by my, grand, by, by my dad and my dad believes that to this day. And the fact is that that's not true. The fact is that over 50,000 people died at Bergen-Belsen. And uh, when the camp was liberated, you can, the, the, the British made videos, and you can see them using the bulldozers and, and dipping their, their um, handkerchiefs in, in diesel so they, to avoid the smell as they're bulldozing hundreds and hundreds of people into these graves. It's, it's a horrible, horrible sight. And us Germans, we were, incredible at keeping records and uh, pretty much we knew everybody who ever went through Bergen-Belsen and all who died and Frank died at Bergen-Belsen and so there's not a lot of mystery but somehow we have to deal with that anxiety how do we deal with that we weren't really able to deal with the concentration camp we weren't able to deal what we actually are and who what we did my family to this day said, well, we, we just didn't know. We just didn't know that there was the trains going continually during the night. We didn't know that that smell in the air was burning bodies and flesh. 
but talk to other families uh, in the same area. Uh, my son went, I sent him into the area uh, to live with my aunt uh, a number of years back and he talked to other people because he's inquisitive and of course we knew, of course everybody knew, everybody knew what was going on. And uh, so we, uh, you can kind of see that side of the family, we deal with problems by just, they don't exist. And uh, my other side of the family, we just don't talk to each other. And uh, so what's my point? My point is you probably have a family. You probably have a history. And to recover our children, we have to face some of these problems some of the failures of our past and we have to start investing in our children and grandchildren and to connect with them. We, um, we have to avoid, number one, I would say, avoid the blame game. It's so easy to blame everybody else for our problems, but if we can face them, we can have victory. So um, maybe you say your family isn't like that. Uh, I found, if I'm honest, everybody's family is like that, and we all need a little bit of help. One of the most, uh, I kind of just go back, you know, what one of the most famous families that ever lived, all for three or four generations, everything was recorded about them, and it's fascinating. And uh, I don't know how, uh, how much you know about history, but everybody's heard of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And uh, they are a very interesting family. And uh, they, it wasn't a nice family. We, we start off and, and Abraham is uh, having a, a fight with his father over religion, uh, very at odds with each other. Then um, him and his wife are having issues because they're not having children and there's an affair and then there is a, 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 another child and eventually has a child with his, fa with his wife. But then there's a war between the two children and things aren't working out. And, uh, and then those children have children and the next generation and uh, the two sons are at war with each other, ready to kill each other to the point that one of them has to flee the country or else the other one is going to kill him. And that continues. And the next generation again, there's issues. And to the point that one of the sons is so hated that they, that they pretty much murder him and they sell him off to slavery. And uh, one of the sons uh, has, has a, has, sleeps with a prostitute and and has a child with her, and it turns out to be his daughter-in-law. And you just kind of go, wow, there's family problems. And all the children that we ever deal with in the school system, they've got issues. If Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had these issues, and this is a few thousand years ago, we've got issues, we've got family problems, and we have to help these children. And but there was one in, in the family who decided to recover the family, just decided to be honest about the issue, and he wasn't bitter. He didn't blame everybody else. He said, okay, I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to help everybody. And I hope that if you're listening to me, that you'll decide to be that one person who's going to help these children and who's going to make that difference and spend time with them. And... Uh, and help their anxiety, help their problems. We've all got lots of history to think about it. And, and that's why I'm doing this program, is because I decided I'm gonna help my children. I'm not, not gonna talk to them. I am not gonna cover things up. I'm gonna talk about what's going on because those are, that's my history. And, uh, and so COVID has left us an incredible opportunity um, something to be very thankful. Everybody's kind of locked up with your own family. So you've got an opportunity to talk. You've got an opportunity to recover things. You've got an opportunity to spend time with your children. It's, it's wonderful. And so we can be thankful and, and deal with everything in a very merciful way. Like I said, don't blame others. Uh, 
cry out for mercy and and you know we have to learn how to love our children and to deal with things and uh, if we do that then I think our programs with our kids will be very successful and fruitful because they they are, do have a trouble focusing they do have a lot of anxiety they do have a lot of issues to deal with and especially with this you know uh, staying home for almost a year and not being out there in the world and what kind of crazy world is this that we live in and uh, but it can be recovered and uh, we can love our children and we can teach them and they can do well so um, let's move on to our program so we started off with uh, doing the the gunslinger and you'll see in the video that some of them are still having trouble and, and it's the ones who didn't practice I know I know and the ones that did it during the week that they got the rhythm you'll see that they can go super super fast and because their brain has learned the activity next we uh, at the table we uh, just reviewed some combinations so how many different how many ways you can add to eight and it turns out that there was four combinations then we review what we're moving on now what are the actual values of each rod so a green is three a brown is eight excuse me a orange is ten we are now getting into writing equations so as I said before I like to use the square paper okay so we start off with this this is square paper you can download it off the internet and uh, just one centimeter per square so it's uh, we start off with a little bit larger but the nice thing about this I can also use them to put the rods on later on and we can do things on there always one letter or one sign per square keeps it nice and orderly even the youngest of them wrote really nice. Um, I always leave one line in between and uh, they were able to do that. It took them a little bit to get it through. Now, I haven't done this before. I, we didn't practice. Everything that you pretty much see is our first time. Then, um, as we're writing, we had to modify things a little bit. This is from Gatanyo's book. Um, here, these are the terms that we're using. Um, the difficulty comes with uh, dark green and green. Um, we use the D for the dark green instead of a G because we've got two G's and B is a big problem because we've got three B's. So B, small B for black. The brown, we use a T for tan and a capital B for blue. It's the larger one. And then O for orange. So that just makes it simple. Then we have to use two letters. It just uh, would confuse things a little bit. And the kids learned to write equations, which was a little bit of a challenge, but uh, they did very well. Then uh, multiples, that was a challenge. Um, just writing 2G or 3G. And, and uh, they, uh, they picked it up and it took a little bit of time. And you'll see they'll have their moments and uh, one of the things that you that I don't know if you noticed in the video but some of them start to scam a little bit they're always looking over to the side and uh, particularly Ingi who's a little bit younger and we kind of have to say Ingi try not to and at the end when she kind of stops herself from she can actually work through it she just needs that extra time and you can kind of see her wheels turning and it's very nice to see and then and then she's getting it and she she feels very proud of herself and and is encouraged because she can actually do it instead of just uh, scamming we uh, did subtraction so we've now done uh, addition subtraction multiplication and division we emphasized a little bit on division today just to make sure that's solid and we're trying to stay under under 10 I sometimes go over 10 I I forget and uh, but we're trying to just get the ideas the concepts before we move into the larger numbers we finished off with practical work and that is things like um, sets so he does three jumps and he does three jumps three times 
bags of potatoes or bags of apples. Um, uh, he has ten rods and he gives two away, three away, this way. So there's add, addition and subtraction in one question. Um, trying to make it very practical, I'm trying to make it real and I must be honest, by the end of the, the session, my brain was was steaming because I don't prepare these things ahead of time. I'm trying to think through them and trying to think examples and try to make it at a level that the kids can handle. So if I find one is too difficult, oh, that was a little bit hard, and then I modify it and I try to find a little bit easier one, but I want to make it challenging. And and uh, you'll find that the kids will say, well, give us another one, give us a harder one, G come on, keep going. And, uh, and that's exciting to see. At, uh, just as such as a, an encouragement when they want to do more, when they want to do, make it a little bit difficult. And I think that's one of the things that we, that we do in often, we give them long worksheets and, uh, and they sit there and they, they're doing on their, and their brains actually shut off. And in a situation like that, there's a lot of excitement and they can learn how to think at a very high level. So that was it for the actual work with the mathematics directly. We finished off with doing a wheelbarrow walk and they had to do an equation that I called out with a wheelbarrow walk on their arms and they had to think quick because your arm's getting tired. You've got a lot of things to think. Somebody's holding your legs and, uh, and you'll find that they just really love that exercise. But they, they struggled at first. Like I said, we filmed that before the math. So they, they, their brains weren't tuned, but, uh, but they just really enjoyed that. And I, was, I was actually surprised. There were more and more. I thought they were getting tired. And like, oh, okay, that's enough. And, and they were like, no, give us another one. Give us a harder one. So, so that was exciting for me. So I hope uh, that's a help to you. Uh, on my sheets that, I, uh, that we put with the video, I try to put uh, in the, uh, on the column on the right, I just put things to practice during the week. And uh, I guarantee you, if the children get some practice and get some attention, they will do very well with this program. Like I said, I have no idea how far we're gonna go. We're just at the basics, adding and subtraction, multiplying and dividing up to 10 right now, but we'll see where it goes and have a lot of fun with it. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll see these children uh, not have the anxiety that I had, not that what I grew up with, but they'll be able to blossom. So thank you very much and we'll see you next week. Welcome to week three of Thinking on Your Feet Mathematics. We're going to start off with a game of uh, Gunslinger. The kids have been uh, practicing and they're pretty excited uh, about what they've learned. So we're just going to start them off and they've got a partner and we're just going to watch them play and then maybe on later on we're going to speed it up a little bit. are going to show what it looks like when you go double speed. <laughs> oh. So the kids still have a lot of energy, so our next warm-up activity is doing burpees and we're going to count not normal, but count by twos first. So, can you guys count by twos yes. Yes. all the way to ten? Yes. You guys remember yes. how to do burpees? Yeah. Yes. Okay, here we go. Start. One. What is it? Say it out loud. Two. 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 Four. Four. Four.
Okay, this time count by threes all the way to ten. And say it out loud. Go. Three, three, three. three. Count by fours. Okay, okay, you ready? Yeah. And go. Four, four eight, eight, six. Okay. And count by fives. Five, ten. ten. Good job. Okay, I think we're warmed up. Okay, ready to go to the table. Yep. So last time we learned how many trains we could do for each color. So let's review a little bit. We're going to take a brown rod. Can everybody take a brown rod? Mm -hmm. Okay. And can everybody build one train out of two colors that's as long as the brown rod? And don't look at each other. Only build it for yourself. Try to do your own thinking instead of looking across trying to copy others. Okay? Okay. Everybody has at least one train? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. now try to find how many other trains you can make that make a brown. How many other trains? Just try to think on your own. How many trains can you make? Can you name me one train that's as long as the brown? Purple and purple. Purple and purple. Can you give me another one, Moses? Black and white. Black and white. Can you give me one, Inky? Green and yellow. Green and yellow. Can you give me one token? Red and dark green. Okay. Tiki, how many different ones are there? Four. There's four different ones. Now, you could say that yellow and green and then green and yellow, but they're really the same thing, mm -hmm. right? So there's four different ones that we've been able to find. So Ingi was having a little bit of trouble. Which one is missing, Ingi? Can you, can you think about it? Which one is missing? You want to try the one with the white? White and what? Can somebody help her out? White and what? What's littler than brown? Uh, eight. What is it? Eight? Uh, okay. Oh, good. Black and white. Good. And you, you're still missing one. What other one is missing? What plus what equals eight? What color don't you have? What plus what equals eight? You want to try purple? Purple. Purple and what? Makes brown. Very good. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the next thing. We practiced covering. So if I have a red, how many whites can cover a red? A red. Red. Two. Two whites cover red. So let's build that. Two whites cover red. Can you build that? I know we don't have a lot of whites. I have some. Two whites cover red. No. Okay. And how many whites cover green? Light green? Three. 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 Okay. So now we're not going to build it. I'm just going to ask. Okay. How many colors? Four. Four? Four, Four whites? Yeah. Yes. Okay. How many for this one? Yeah. Five. 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 How, many? how many for this one, Seven. Moses? Seven. How many for this one, Axa? Eight. How many for this one, Moses? Uh, Solomon? Nine. How many for this one, Tiki? Ten. Okay, so let's go quick now, and I'm going to ask you guys, okay? I'm just going to call out your name, and you have to look at the rod that I'm holding up. Ingrid? Six. Token? Uh, eight. Tiki? Five. Moses? Eight. Axa? Four. Solomon? Seven. Good. Okay, so we got a pretty good handle on those and we'll just keep practicing. As we're using them, you guys will get better. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, let's build a train of two green. Two light green. Two light green. How much is that? Six. 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 Okay, and you finished building. Okay, and are you guys ready? Yep. yep. Okay. Put it away. And three reds. Three reds is the same as? Dark green. Dark green. Dark green. Just build it and put your hand over it. Okay, everybody got it? Yeah. Okay. What was it, Mo uh, Solomon? Um, green. Dark green. 
dark green. Good. Okay, push it away and let's do the next one. Two yellow. Okay, token, what is it? Orange. Orange, okay. Um, okay, uh, put it away. And four red. Yes. Four red is the same as what? You can cover it when you're done. When you're covering it, then I'll know you're done. Put two hands over top of it. I know you're done. Good. Ingy, what do you have? Brown. Very good. Okay, hands behind your back. Close your eyes. Oh, yes, I love this. Close your eyes. And don't blurt out the answer. If you know the answer, put up your hand. Okay? Two purple is the same as? Axa? Brown. Okay. Um, three light green is the same as? Tiki? Blue. Good. Um, two yellow is the same as Moses? Ten. Okay. Four. Good. Um, four whites is the same as? Token? Purple. Very good. You can open your eyes. Good, you guys got a pretty good handle on that, okay? Nice one. So let's move on to the next one. We're gonna look at just cutting or dividing. So if I take a color like brown and I divide it into these reds, and I just do it like this, how many reds can I cover it? Four. Oh, yeah. Cover I know. How many? Eight. Um, Cover it with how many eight. reds? Eight. Not eight reds. How many reds? Just build it. All Just build it so you can see it. Okay. How many reds does it take to cover the brown? I've got ingrid. How many reds does it take to cover four. brown? Four. All the Good. Four. Okay, so I want to see it. I want to see you guys build it. I want to see it in front of you. Okay? Now, just listen carefully. We can say eight, take away two, take away two, take away two, and take away two more, right? A zero. A zero. A zero. But, or we can say eight divided by two is four. Is four. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways of saying it, but it's all the same, right? Mm -hmm. So in a way, dividing is just a, sim a little bit more complicated form of saying minus, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you're only using the same color. So let's try a dark green. And we're gonna divide this into this size of block, into light green, equal pieces of light green. How many light green pieces will it take? Three. How many light green? Three, Moses? Did you have three light green pieces on top there? Take a look at it. Two. So it's important not to blurt out answers, but to build it and make sure that you see it, right? Mm -hmm. So let's keep to the rule. We build it and then cover it. And then when I ask you, okay? Let's try blue. And I want you to, to cover the blue with light green. Light green. Shh. Cover it with light green and put your hands over top of it so nobody can see it. Okay? Axa, how many light greens does it? Three light greens. Everybody have that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good job, Amy. All right. We're going to move on to the next thing now. Push all your rods into the middle. We're gonna start writing, and we're not gonna write the numbers right away. We're gonna use colors. And when we write the color, we only wanna use one letter. So now, 
with the rods, it's a little bit complicated because there's three of our colors that start with the letter B, right? So we're going to be a little bit tricky. So, um, so, but let's start from the beginning. White will just be a W. Red will just be R. Green, the light green. We're not going to say light green. We're just going to call it green. And we're going to make a G. For purple, we're going to use P. For yellow, we will use Y. But for dark green, we're going to use a D. Uh -huh. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So instead of using a G or a DG, uh, we're going to just use D. For black, we're going to use a B. And the brown, we're going to call it tan, which is a type of brown. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just okay. so that we don't confuse ourselves and we can only use one letter. So we're just going to use a T for brown, which means tan. For the blue, we have another B, so we're going to use a capital B. Okay? Because it's the biggest one. That's mm -hmm. easy to remember, right? Use yeah. a capital because it's the biggest one. And for orange, we will use O. Mm -hmm. Everybody I got that? Okay? So, everybody gets a, is going to get a piece of paper, and we, I'm going to make an equation, and you have to write I it out. Like this. Now, when we are writing our letters, and when we're writing things, we, there, I'm going to give you square paper, and in every square, I want you to put the letter, okay? Yeah, okay. So, you're not going to write over top, or, or, or very big, you're just, every square is going to get one letter. So what letter is this one? R. 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 And it's just Red. on the inside. What symbol is this? Plus. 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 Everybody's familiar with that already. So it's just a cross, plus, what's that? R. 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 And plus, green. and what's that? Green. Green. Is it the dark green or the light green? Light green. Light green. The light green. Okay? So and I what would I put in here? Ten. Answer. And what would be the answer? So it's red, and red makes four. Four. Purple. Purple. And green makes black. So B. Black. So I would put a what here? Orange. Orange. No. A, little B. a B. A little B. A little B. Just like that. Okay. What's the big block for? Okay. That's just to show you how to do it. Okay. So everybody's gonna get a piece of paper now, and uh, let's move on. So we're not going to waste a lot of space, so we'll just start right on our first line, and I want you to write down an equation, okay? So let's just practice right away. R plus, so the plus goes into the next square, then an R plus a G an equal sign, and what is our answer? B. 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 Little B. Little B. Okay, so we did this one, so that's familiar. No. So now we're going to leave one space so that we don't get confused. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to leave one space and we go down to the third line. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you guys ready for the next mm -hmm. one? Yes. Okay, so let's write one. A capital B. Plus a, a, a W equals W, capital B, plus W equals orange. Sorry. What? O. An O. Okay. Everybody got that? Yep. 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 Okay. Now, I'm going to build something, and you guys have to write it down. Now, remember, leave a space. Yep. Okay, so next one, you guys have to do this, okay? So this is a plus question. This one plus this one makes this one. Can everybody write that down? So over here, what's this one, Ingi? This white. one? Yep, what do you put for white? Just give yourself a space in this one. Yeah. Plus. What's this one? White. Makes. That's equal. And then we have. Red. Okay. Okay. Are you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Anybody, everybody remember what letter we use for this one? Yeah. A G, what? A D. And D. 
Okay, so a little bit tricky now. This one plus this one makes this one. Can you write that? Okay, leave a space and then on to the next line. Nope. Think. Think, what's this one? A dolphin. And what's this one? What's the next yeah. one? Yeah, write it down. No, you're supposed to leave a space. You have to leave a space. Always leave a space. Look up here. Yeah. So, the next line, I want you to write, instead of putting when I'm saying, when we say multiplication or of, mm -hmm. we don't have to use any sign. All we do is we say two, not a very good two, two W. What's two W? Times. Yeah. Two of white is? Two, but red. Right, gray. Two red. That's right. That's what I do in my mind. Okay. So can you guys write that down? So in the first square you would put a 2, and the next square you would put a W, and the next square you would put equal, and in the fourth square you would put an R. Everybody should have this, 2W equals R. Everybody got that? Yes. Okay, let's try one more, okay? Three G. 3G is equal to? B. B. Can everybody write that? B. Three, three, green. three green is equal to B. Brown. No. Blue. What's B capital B? Blue. 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 Okay. okay. Everybody got that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now no, you're going to have to find the answer. I'm going to give you another one. Okay. Well, this one. What does it say? Look up here first. What does it say? Two, two of yellow is uh. what? Now you guys could all do it one I had you built, but now you're having to write it down, so it makes it a lot harder. Okay? Oh. So just write down two yellow yes. is equal to, and then oh. Oh. write the answer, and don't say it out loud. Okay. So what do you have, Amy? Oh, very good. Okay, so let's do one more. The next one. Don't say anything, just write it down. So did you write down? Yes, I wrote it. Okay. Yes, I'll give you. Do you have it, Axa? Okay. Okay. What's the color that it's the same? Anybody know? Yes. Put up your hand. Okay, Moses, what's the color? Dark what? green. And what do we put? D. D. D going to do a subtraction. Does everybody know how to write a minus? Okay. So we're going to do, okay. So let's build it. Okay. Before we write it down. A D, what, what color is D? Dark green. Dark green. So get yourself a dark green. Get a dark green and cover it with yellow. Cover it. Put it on top. Put it on top. I know. Put it on top, Iggy. Equals Put double. it on top, and o what is left? W. A W, okay, so can you write that down? I already did. D, cover with yellow, makes white. Everybody got that? Yeah. Okay, 
Now, I'm gonna give you a tricky one. See if we can do this one, okay? Here we go. You guys already did this one. Okay, see if you guys can figure this one out. See if you can build it. What's the first one say? Three. Three of what? Three of what? Whites. Okay, so you gotta get three whites. Get three whites first. Before you do anything, three whites. Good. And then what do you have to do? Plus. Plus. One more white. Makes. What does it make? So what are we gonna write? What? P. P, okay, good. Okay, can you write it down? Everybody take time. And just Mom, write it down. No, actually, <laughs> see if you guys can get this one. What is that? Oh, okay. Uh, I know. Okay, so you make a line down the center of your page, and then start on the other half. Blue? Token, if you run out of space. A blue, and then you cover. Minus is cover. You write it just by a line that goes across. I know. I know. I know. You're taking away. Put it on top of the what? No? Ingi, what was the first one? Make sure you clear your space in front. You don't get confused. So what's left when I cover the blue with yellow? I don't. No, blurt it out. I know. Axa, what is it? P. What can we put on here, Ingi? What can you put on here? What fits here? Try it. Try it. You can write that somewhere. Try it. Um, Try it. I did. don't write nines like that. I write them like All right. That. You got it. A P. Okay. So let's write it down. Capital B. Take away yellow. And we get. I know. I know. P. Yeah, that's P. That's right. Sounds like. <laughs> okay, are you guys ready? Yeah. We're gonna put our papers away. We'll keep practicing, writing down. But right now, we're going to do some um, some thinking in our heads. Okay, are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, I want you guys to build it, but listen carefully, okay? Ingi is playing hopscotch. Hopscotch. It's a game where you jump over squares. Okay? And Ingi is a very good jumper and she can jump three squares at a time. Okay? And so every time she jumps, she jumps three squares. And she jumped two times. So how many squares did she jump in all? I know. Okay, put your hand up. How many squares did she jump in all? Build it. Okay. Okay, Moses, what do you have? How many? How many did she jump? She jumped six. No, you had it right, Ingi. You changed it. You jumped twice. You jumped three. And three. And then in total, you jumped six. Okay. Okay. I didn't get that. No, she jumped you three, but she jumped two times. Oh. Three. Oh, nine. Right? That's okay. Let's do the next one. That's that, okay. We're that all was learning. Fun. That was We're fun. learning. That was fun. Yeah, that was, okay. That was Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Solomon is getting bags of potatoes out of the cellar. <laughs> okay? Each bag of potatoes has three potatoes. And he gets three bags with three in it. Every bag has three potatoes. And he gets three of the bags. How many potatoes did he bring up? I know. Nine. Okay. Okay, try to wait till I ask you. Very good. Ingi, finish it up. 
finish it up. You had that, and then just, good job. Okay, took a bag of three, and a bag of three, and a bag of three, and how many did he have, Ingi? Blue. Which is how many? Nine. Very good. Okay, we'll say Tiki. Tiki has five friends. Okay, and she wants, she's baking cookie for, cookies for her friends, and she wants to give every friend two cookies. How many cookies does she have to bake? So make sure that every friend gets two cookies. This is very I hard. I, I don't know if any of you are going to get it. I know. Five I friends, know. two cookies. I know. I know. Five friends, right? And she's going to give her five friends one cookie each. One. And then she's going to give her five friends one more cookie each. So how many cookies does she have to bake? Orange. Orange. Ten. Okay. Moses had orange. You had orange. You had orange. I don't know. No. Solomon, what did you have? But you said each friend gets two cookies. That's yeah. right. And there are five friends. Yeah. There are she has five friends. friends and every friend gets two cookies. Not one. So if I have five, then everybody would get one cookie each. But I have to do it two times, so that means that every friend gets two cookies. Another way we could do it, watch over here, Solomon. Solomon, watch me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Watch. We could do it like this. She has five friends, and each friend gets two cookies. That one gets two cookies. That one gets two cookies. Right? This one gets two cookies. And this one gets two cookies. And this one gets two cookies. You see that? Yes. Yeah. So how many cookies would that be? Let's lay it out. That would be ten. That would be? Orange. 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 Very good. So that's a tricky one, but it really makes us think, right? So that's important. Okay? So let's go, let's go to another one. Okay, you guys ready? Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Here's another one. It's Mother's Day. And AXA wants to give her mom 10 flowers. So she goes out in the field and she picks on the south side, in the south field, she picks two flowers. Oh, poor. And then she goes to the west field and she picks three flowers. And then she goes to the north field and she picks two more flowers. How many more flowers does she need? Let's build it. Ingi, how many flowers does she still need? Um, Lift up. How many flowers does she still need? Three. She still needs three flowers. G, Hold on. How many does she still need, G. Moses? Three, like three. G. Okay. G. Token, did you get it? Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, 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 I totally got it. Okay, it very G. good. Okay, so Moses is going to school and he takes one apple with him to school okay and when he comes home he eats another apple okay and he goes to school for five days each day he eats an apple in the morning. He takes one with him, sorry. And he eats one in the evening. Oh, Lord. So how many does he eat every day, but he does it for five days? Can you guys, no, don't look around. Try and think. I know, I know. Try and think. What did you say? I'm oh, sorry, I'm so confusing. Yeah, just, okay, let's do it again. I know. For every day, he takes one apple to school, and then he eats one in the evening. So how many does he eat every day? Two. Two every day. Now, he's going to school for how many days? Two. Five. Five days. So, every day he I has know. two, and two, and two, and two, 
And so I how know. many times does he eat two? I know. Don't tell me. How many apples altogether? I know. I know. Ten. Ten apples. Okay. So that was really tricky. We'll keep going. It, really it makes us steam. I know some of the older kids, okay. you guys were doing it. Moses is having a little bit of trouble, but we'll keep doing it. And after a while, you'll get it. Okay? So that's it today for Thinking on Your Feet Mathematics. We're going to do our activity. But as far as at the table, we are done. So everybody worked really hard. Inga, you did good. You got that last one. Excellent. Good job. So this is something a little bit new. Um, this is our cool down activity at the end to try to take all the things that we learned and try to integrate them. So we're going to do some wheelbarrow walks and as they're doing their wheelbarrow walk, they have to build uh, an equation on the floor. So let's try it. Okay. So do you guys understand? Yeah. And you have to build an equation on the floor. Okay. Just wait. I haven't told you yet. Don't go. Just slow down. Slow down. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. You gotta listen carefully. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay, three of two makes what? Okay, okay, I got it. Don't drop me, don't drop me. Don't drop me, don't drop me. You did it wrong, Solomon. You did it wrong, Solomon. Okay, and stop, stop. Okay, so what did we get? Three of two. Is there three of two here? No, there's not three of two. Three of two here? No. Okay, so we're gonna need a little bit of practice, okay? So let's do it again. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Two of light green. Two of light green. Two of light green. Makes what? Yep. Two of light green. Okay, and go back. Two of light green makes. <laughs> Two of light green. Guys, off means times. Did everybody forget that? Yes, we know. Okay, and stop. Let's see. Okay. But this is very challenging because there's not a lot of time to think. Your arms are aching, you're holding up, and you're really having to think on your feet. And the kids are having a little bit of trouble, but it's a good challenge and everybody wants to do more. So let's keep on going. Okay, switch. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Two yellows. Two yellows make what? Two yellows make what? I'm not dropping Orange, orange, orange. Okay, you got it right, but a little bit of help. And that's okay, yeah. your partner can help you. Sure. Okay, here we go. Two of purple. So two purples make a... Two purples. It's hard, hard working hard. Okay, you got it. Good. All right. And white, green, and yellow make what? White, white. white green, and yellow make. White. Dark green or light green? Light green. Light green. Light green. White. Green. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, my. What was the question, Moses? Oh, it was white. I told you. White, light green, and yellow. Okay, so it's a challenge. Here's a really hard one. Okay, you're going to take a blue rod and you're going to cut it into three parts. Okay, can you do that? Yes. Okay. Three equal parts. No. Three equal parts. Blue and cut it into three equal parts. Take some more of your 
Pinky boom. Just do it. Anyway. You're fine. Do it, Pinky. No looking. Get up.